we have to start with the most prominent story of the last 24 hours. I'm, of course, talking about the situation with Bill's safety, DeMar Hamlin. On Monday night, during Monday night football, the Buffalo Bills were taking on the Cincinnati Bengals, and there was a play where Hamlin was going to tackle Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins. Higgins trucked Hamlin, hit him in the chest, and then shortly thereafter, Hamlin collapsed, went into cardiac arrest. He was taken to the University of Cincinnati Medical Center, where he is still there at the time of this recording. He is still undergoing treatment. Uh, the last report I saw was early today, and his vitals have normalized. However, he is still in critical condition. The Hamlin family released a statement today that you can go and check out. It's on the NFL's Twitter. It's plastered all over social media, really. Um, they don't have any further information to share about DeMar's to share about DeMar's condition. But of course, I am sending all of my prayers, all of my thoughts to DeMar himself. I hope that he recovers fully, swiftly uh, to the family as well, because this is not something that you ever want to deal with, whether, you know, they're a friend. And I, I can only I can't even begin to imagine what his parents must feel like. I mean, watching their their boy, their baby boy, 24 years old have to have to go through this doing the thing that he loves the most. Now, the NFL so far has done all of the right things. They suspended the game on Monday night. I think what helped was if I remember correctly, ESPN decided to not show anything else in reference to that game once the whole situation um transpired, which shout out to ESPN. Again, like it is the bare minimum, but you know, the ESPN and the NFL could have could have told the guys that they have to continue with this game, which would have been super, super fucked up. But fortunately, the game was postponed yesterday, and I believe the NFL is not going to resume the game this week, which is something that I did not expect. Now, this situation, as ridiculous, or I don't want to say ridiculous, um, as just, I, I really can't even think of an adjective to describe this, as shitty a situation as this is. There are a lot of sports fans out there. There are a lot of people who have access to the internet. There are a lot of people that have ridiculous opinions. And last night, the main character on Twitter was none other than Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless, boys and girls, had the absolute worst take that you could have in a situation like this. I'm sure if the, I'm sure that if you're listening to me talk about it right now, you've seen this tweet currently. This infamous tweet by Skip Bayless, which will go down in the Internet Hall of Infamy, has Bruh. 134 million impressions. So Skip, last night, after this happens, tweets, No doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game. But how? This late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. And I don't have to explain to you why this tweet is tone deaf, why it's off base, why it's absolutely ridiculous that this old man, that this troglodyte would decide to compose to compose a message and put this out into the world, put this out to his 3 million followers and put this out to the millions of sports fans that use Twitter. Don't know what provoked him to do this. This is just a bad take. This is an L take from Skip Bayless. This is a common Skip Bayless L. And it's an L because... Obviously, the NFL is going to have to think about the logistics of this situation. But no one in the league office, no one in either of these organizations, nobody on planet Earth other than Skip Bayless is thinking about it like mere moments after this kid, a literal child, was carted off the field and was taking, taken to the hospital after receiving CPR for nine minutes. Nobody in their right mind, was thinking about that. Again, the NFL only today decided that they would not resume the game this week. So they're barely thinking about the logistics, and this is something that they're going to have to reckon with. And yeah, like this was a big game. This game has number one seed implications for the Bills, for the Chiefs, for whomever. But again, nobody in their right mind, nobody with like a modicum of empathy is thinking about it, is thinking about that as this 24-year-old kid who is young enough to be Skip Bayless's son is sitting unresponsive on the football field later skip tweet he tweets shortly thereafter does not clear up does not really do anything to make the situation better 
Nothing is more important than that young man's health. That was the point of my last tweet. I'm sorry if that was misunderstood, but his health is all that matters. Again, everything else is irrelevant. I prayed for him and will continue to. That is the literal textbook case of old man not knowing how the internet works. When you get on Twitter, you only have one chance to make the correct take. If you are a person of prominence, you only have one chance to fire off the correct take. And if you, in this instance, can't think of anything other to say, then that then you're praying for Damar Hamlin and his family, that you wish him nothing but the best, like literally everybody else did. I mean, the NBA, Sauce Gardner, J.J. Watt, like literally everyone and their mom is tweeting, wishing nothing but the best for this young man. And Skip just threw that to the side. He didn't even lead with wishing Hamlin a speedy recovery, praying that he is okay. Again, folks, this kid was receiving CPR for nine minutes on the field. This is a, this is such a traumatic experience for everybody involved, for the players, for the first responders, for the coaches, for the families, for the organization. Like I saw a picture of Tredavious White. He, he it looked like he was crying. He like he was inconsolable. Watching one of his friends, one of his brothers, be, lay unconscious on the field. There was Stefan Diggs who went to the hospital the night, who went to the hospital Monday night to be close to one of his friends. There was a Bills fan, I believe they said his name was Andrew, who was kneeling in front of the UC Medical Center, praying for Hamlin's recovery. Like this is the, this is a tremendously, this is just a tremendous situation that, like, was royally fumbled. By Skip Bayless, and this is uh, this is part of my issue with a lot of sports people, and with Skip Bayless in particular. I don't know if I'm going to give Skip Bayless the benefit of the doubt, and I don't know if I, I'm unsure about this just because of knowing who Skip Bayless is. So I don't know if many young people really know Skip Bayless because he's on TV. A lot of young people don't really watch TV. I mean, he's also just like a punching bag on Twitter, which is fine because he deserves it. But Skip Bayless, once upon a time, was a allegedly respected journalist. I say allegedly because I was not around for this. He was um, like actually doing journalism in the 80s and 90s uh, into the 2000s, but then transitioned to television. And of course, when you transition to television, you are, when you transition to television in a full-time role, most of the time, you are not really bringing anything to the table outside of being an entertainer. And there are even like instances of former athletes doing this. Like look, Charles Barkley, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. None of these guys bring truly insightful commentary to inside the NBA. But it's different because the, the show is not dressed up like that. That show is presented in a way where it comes off as just like four guys hanging out. Like four guys kicking it in the barbershop, four guys kicking it at the cookout. And it comes off as genuine a lot of these super dressed up corporate media shows do not come off as that they come off as uh, ratings baiting i guess they look for clips they look to debate they look to engage in ridiculous discourse and jj reddick brought this to light because he does bits with espn and i love jj reddick i think he's a fantastic i think he's a fantastic analyst a fantastic commentator but he mentions how in pregame meetings like the producers Look for topics where him and Stephen A. do not see eye to eye because it generates content. And that's the that's one of the issues with corporate media in that you can't just let the content come organically. Like, I am in a much better position, even though, like, I don't do this full time. This isn't my profession. But I can sit here on the mic and let my thoughts come organically. I can be insightful. I can be funny. Like, I don't feel pressure to say anything out of pocket or, or to deliver a hot take because I also just have more freedom when it comes to content creation. Like I can talk about things that I want to talk about. I don't have to talk about the winter classic. I don't have to talk about baseball. I could talk about fucking Donovan Mitchell, who just had a nearly a 70 point triple double the other day. A little bit later, we're going to talk about the MVP race and stuff like that. But the freedom of content is so much different in alternative media than it is to corporate media. And Skip Bayless has been the villain for many, many years because he joined first take with Stephen A. Smith, or they asked Stephen A. Smith to join first take. And Stephen A. Smith who, again, at one point was a respected journalist. Um, and I'm not trying to disrespect 
Stephen A., but I don't believe that anyone feels he's a journalist anymore. He is now a full-blown entertain- entertainer, and that's fine. But a lot of these guys know where the boundary is. Like, content creators know where the boundary is. And I think that Skip Bayless has been the villain for so long. He's almost been the method acting, I feel like. He's been the villain for so long that the lines are blurred. And he so infrequently brings genuine discourse to his show that everything he does is for clicks, it's for engagement, it's to boost the ratings. And that is a tremendous issue that's still present in sports media. Because when you think about Skip Bayless, he always brings the heat. He always talks about how great the Dallas Cowboys are. They suck. That's fine. Every year, first round exit. Massive L. Have not won a Super Bowl in 25 years. Okay? Massive L for the Cowboys. He always on LeBron. Talking about LeBron is afraid to go to the free throw line. Talking about how LeBron is not even in the same realm as MJ, which is just a blatant lie. And any NBA fan knows that that's a blatant lie. But he's playing the game. It's fine. It's lighthearted because when you talk, of, when you have discussions like that, that is in reference to the actual sport itself. We are talking about LeBron James, the athlete. We are talking about LeBron James. Oh, we are talking about Dak Prescott, the athlete. We're talking about Ezekiel Elliott, the athlete. We're talking about Patrick Mahomes, the athlete. This is different because we're now, we've moved on from DeMar Hamlin, the athlete, to DeMar Hamlin, the person who is currently laid up in a hospital bed, hooked up to God knows how many machines. And Skip cannot disassociate from the content brain, the content brain rot that he has. A lot of that, well, I don't want, I don't want to say a lot, but also some of that stems from the landscape in which a lot of sports fans exist. There are a lot of diehard sports fans all across the world. And in the United States, there are more of them simply because there are more sports fans here. A lot of these fans live and die by their favorite team. But a situation like this is immensely humanizing. And regardless of how diehard Bills Mafia is, regardless of how diehard Bengals fans, I think they're uh, who they, I think that's what the Bengals are, regardless of how diehard they are, they all understand the severity of this situation they all understand that this is beyond the sport this is a young man 24 years old like i cannot i i simply cannot get over that 24 years old a young man who was out there for people's entertainment because that is what sports are their entertainment regardless of how diehard a sports fan you are like i i love to death my brooklyn nets my brooklyn nets i love to death my new york giants but It sucks when they lose. It's great when they win. But ultimately, the sadness that I feel or the joy that I feel after one of those respective outcomes, it fades away because it's just entertainment. There are no real life implications for me. My life does not change regardless of whether or not Brooklyn wins. My life does not change whether or not the Giants make the playoffs or not. not. My mental health may fluctuate a little bit. And I may be, you know, in my feelings a little bit watching Brooklyn and watching Steve Nash just catastrophically burn this whole situation to the ground. But ultimately, I go to bed, I wake up the next day and I'm like, all right, you know, it's it's a new day. What do I have to do? What do I got to do today? Do I got to babysit. Do I got to do the dishes. What am I making for dinner? Like life goes on. And that is the fundamental disconnect that Skip Bayless does not have with this situation because his whole brain is content, being the villain, being the contrarian, um, regardless of how, you know, he may actually feel sorry for what he said, but he didn't come out and say it. He said, I'm sorry that that was misunderstood. Like, dog, it was misunderstood because you don't know how to, can you, you didn't convey the message properly. There's no way that, dude, this guy has, Look at these numbers. This 78,000 quote tweets. 78,000 quote tweets at the time of this recording. There is no way that that many people misinterpreted it. Misinterpreted it. And on top of however however many replies, he got 104,000 replies. 
There is no way that a hundred and <laughs> that two hundred thousand people misinterpreted what you said. Even Nina Turner, who is um former congressional representative for um for Ohio for fuck what was she? She was um a politician big in Ohio. Um and she even says this goes to show how some dehumanize professional athletes, especially black ones. These athletes are people with families. They are people, not bodies meant for entertainment. That is something that most people recognize. There are a few freaks that don't, and they merely look at athletes as vehicles of entertainment, which is fucked up because, again, these are people, especially football players, because football players are playing an immensely dangerous game. It is incomprehensibly dangerous and they are putting their bodies on the line and like it's it's very different from a lot of the other major sports the only sport that i can think of off top that compares to football in its level of danger is motorsport nascar formula one moto gp like these are all incredibly dangerous sports and these guys willingly put their bodies on the line for the fans because that's who they do it for. They do it for the fans. I mean, they do it for the love of the game as well, but they do it for the fans because it's so fucking cool when you're a professional athlete and you make a sick play or you help lead a comeback like the fucking Vikings did against the Colts or you bring a Super Bowl to a town, to a city that had never experienced it before. Like, you leave a lasting impression on people. And I can't even, like, even more so with, like, children. You... When I see videos of athletes like going up to children, shaking their hand, bringing them onto the field, like that is what sports are about. It's about creating memories that will last forever. And I know that sounds that probably sounds a little weebish to say, but I I think that sports are are super cool in that regard. That you can interact with a premier athlete, like a one percent of the one percent, and have this human connection. With them, And that is what's lost on Skip Bayless, and that is what's lost on a lot of sports media, especially when they start speculating about what athletes are doing in their private lives. This isn't relevant to DeMar Hamlin, but like, I know this was big when AI was around, Allen Iverson was around. Uh, people were just like speculating on what he was doing off the court, and that's not really for me. I remember when Dell and, what the f was Steph's mom's name? Sonia? When, uh... The Currys, their parents were getting divorced. Bad tabloids were talking about it, and I didn't, I, I didn't want to because I don't care. I don't like that's not relevant to the game. I want to come here. I want to come on the mic, and I want to talk about the sport itself. If I want to talk about societal issues, if I want to talk about cultural issues, I will address those in a different manner on a different show in a different forum. Because again, sports are not life and death. Like there's a lot of sick shit going on in the world. There's climate change that's going on where it where getting ready to experience a worldwide re recession. I mean, COVID is still a thing. Like there is, there are so much additional real life issues that we could worry about. And I don't want to bring those real life issues into the sports discourse unless it's warranted in some meaningful way. Like when there was everything going on with Kyrie, when there was the shit going on with Jerry Jones, because that is impactful as well. It just like really sucks that Skip Bayless is a prominent figure in sports media is a guy who's been around for a while, is a guy who's been around on the internet for a while, like, is a guy who is so famous and has so much money and has has access to all these resources and he couldn't bring in a PR guy to help him avoid this impending shitstorm. It's it's just ridiculous to me and I I it just sucks that, you know, that we have that we had to that we had to experience this and it doubly sucks that he didn't apologize like formally at this point. Um, apparently, he was on Undisputed today and like, again, didn't apologize for his fuck up, uh, which is just absolutely, which it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's one thing to have the wrong take. Like, you know, people fuck up from time to time. I've had bad takes. Everyone's had bad takes. But like when you have a bad take and you see your ass getting beaten the QRTs like this, naturally, you would think that, oh, I did something wrong. Whenever there is multiple people that are mad at you, it's not them, it's you, fam. So he could have just deleted these tweets and retweeted something like, I'm sorry for what I previously tweeted. My sentiment, I did not express my sentiments properly. 
I don't know what I was thinking. I apologize. I wish nothing but the best for Damar Hamlin going forward. That's all he could have said. Because, again, no one's thinking about the logistics of the NFL rescheduling this game when one of their young players is laid up in the hospital in critical condition. It's just like, I don't know why your brain is over there. 